no longer shared kin or blood, but two hostile nations at war. That's how leader Kim Jong-un now describes North Korea's view of South Korea. Countries once one split into two in the lead-up to the Cold War eight decades ago. Seeing as they call us their main enemy and collude with foreign powers, we should no longer make the mistake of considering South Korea a partner for reconciliation and unification. It's a concerning development for Seoul, which strongly condemned North Korea's hostile stance. He's basically said that although we are still one people, that uh, the South Koreans are puppets of capitalism, especially the United States. And he has uh, given up dealing with the South Koreans peacefully. At the conclusion of its year-end key party meeting, North Korea vowed also to intensify its production of nuclear weapons and military drones. That says other powers strongly suspect it is strengthening military cooperation with Russia. This year, Pyongyang speedily developed its solid-fueled Hwasong-18 intercontinental ballistic missile after a record five launches of ICBMs. It also claimed to have sent its first functioning military spy satellite into Earth's orbit, with three more planned in the new year. The conservative Yoon song yeol government has emphasized that peace is earned through military strength, dismissing his predecessor's policy of engagement with the North as fake peace reliant on the enemy's goodwill. South Korea has recently engaged in high-profile military drills with Japan and the United States, and analysts say that Pyongyang's ruling out of a peaceful reunification is its attempt to legitimize the use of nuclear weapons against South Korea. As Washington deploys strategic assets more frequently in the region and elections loom in 2024, analysts warn Pyongyang could find new reasons to respond more aggressively in the coming months. Eunice Kim, Al Jazeera, Seoul.